Hello everybody, welcome to the Generic Cappy YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. I'm Amar, otherwise known as Generic Cappy, and today we are doing a fairly laid-back reaction to the reveal live stream for Life is Strange Double Exposure. I uploaded my reaction to the first trailer already on the channel when it debuted, debuted on Sunday, so... I figured this would be, you know, a pretty cool thing to react to. It's going to be fairly long. It's going to be around 50 minutes um, from what I read online. So, obviously, we were expecting, like, gameplay, uh, maybe some minor story beats. You know, what's really going to happen in the story, like, early on in the story. Um, we're going to hear from lead developers and all that. So, very exciting. It's like it's like a direct for a uh, specific game, like the Super Mario Bros. Wonder Direct last year. So, I'm very excited to watch it. Um, it, it did have a five minute countdown. That's not something they usually see with premieres on YouTube, but I guess that also, you know, tells us that there won't be like live questions or anything. It's going to be a pretty, um, straightforward reveal for the game. Um, you know, we're going to see things, um, you know, everything is pretty much planned, I guess. So, um, that's very exciting. Um, we are about 30, 30 seconds away now from the start of it so um i'm just gonna leave it on mute until it starts because uh the premiere music is fairly loud um i don't know if the actual stream's gonna be that loud but i will put up the volume probably like middle on the youtube uh volume counter but if you guys do enjoy this video uh please feel free to subscribe like whatever you would like to do and um tell me down in the comments below if you will be getting life is strange to exposure um, or if this presentation convinces you at all. Okay, let's get right into it. It's rated M. Coming up in this Life, Life is Strange, Strange double, double Exposure, exposure reveal live, live stream. stream. Okay. All you need to know about the game. All I need to Learn know. Learn more about this thrilling supernatural murder mystery okay. from Deck Nine developers Jonathan Stauder and Felice Kwan. There are no footprints, there's no weapon. Police <gasps> no are weapon? completely stumped as to how it could have happened. Discover Max Caulfield's incredible new ability to shift <gasps> between two parallel timelines. Which comes That's something I do want to hear. I want to hear eavesdrop if, and um, snoop and track suspects. What is it? If Welcome Hannah Tell, the actor behind the ability Max. to like go back in time and still in here. It or if it's, or if it's just I mean, what the time know? shifting yeah. or the and reality shifting it power. Off, our world premiere of extended <gasps> gameplay. World premiere so extended get gameplay. Comfy, grab some snacks and get Very ready exciting. to dive into this all new adventure Ooh. in the award winning Life is Strange series. This is Life is Strange Double Exposure. Max Caulfield and Life is Strange Double Exposure. Pretty cool, pretty cool. This might be the gameplay now. It's been three years okay. since oh, the mind. release of Life is Strange True Colors. Since then, yep. the team years. at Deck Nine Games have been hard at work on a game, a story and a world worthy of the return of Max Caulfield beloved right. star of the very first Life is Strange. I've been here before. We what? knew that this had to be something <laughs> special. We knew we had to respect the two unforgettable endings to the first chapter Ooh. of Max's story while They're gonna also do crafting something both. new. Something They're gonna fresh respect both. That echoed and acknowledged Max's past challenges even as it moved her personal story forward. Welcoming in new players from the very beginning while giving fans the story they didn't know they wanted. Ooh. The team have been collaborating along with their partners at Square Enix External Studios to bring Max and Caledon University to vivid life. All right. And we couldn't have done it without Hannah, Tell, and the rest of our stunning cast whose performances elevate and bring nuance to every moment of our story. And okay, so Together, they're doing mocap built for you for this game as well. Murder That's mystery. pretty cool. What is this? Packed full of twists, intrigue, and heart that still intrigue. delivers on every aspect of Life is Strange's <laughs> DNA. Selfies. Meaningful emotional choices driven by your connection to other characters. Ooh, we're going to have we have a agree or refuse decision. That's pretty fun. That reflects the world around us. All and right. all its joy, sorrow, and anxiety. Romance, humor, and humor. life, even in the darkest of circumstances. All right. For those of you who have played every Life is Strange to date, 
We can't wait to welcome you back. <gasps> and for those of you Ooh. curious about Max and her new adventure, we're delighted to have you join us. Okay. Welcome okay. to our deep dive reveal of, of Life is Strange Double, Double exposure. exposure. That's pretty cool. That was a pretty cool introduction to the game, I guess. I swore. Okay, so I they are showing the again. reveal trailer again. Okay. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's like an owl. Two nights ago. I guess for like, oh, I mean, we could talk about what we just heard for a little bit. Um, about a minute and a half. Body um, what was it? They said they're going to respect both the endings to the first game. I wonder if that does mean that, like, since there's two realities, one of them is in the reality I that I can trust. Um, Arcadia Bay was saved, or, or the ending where Arcadia Bay friend, was not saved. Um, dead. I think that would be kind of interesting. But so I guess that also would mean, like, the two still stories still voice, converge to, like, one singular point. Um, but I guess we will see. My power. Um, I somehow... Shifted. <laughs> Shifted? Like, like, like right here. Like, here? maybe this is one is still in this reality alive. where something different happens. Like, one of the endings happens, step. and then in your current reality, another ending happens. Um, maybe you choose at the beginning of the game which reality, um, or no, which um, the same as this one, choice you made. Except you're dead. Dead. I can There's still two moves. Save I can solve and prevent the same murder across two timelines. It is an interesting, like, idea. I wonder how they're gonna really... I mean, I guess we're gonna find out a little bit now, but how they're really gonna address, like, what's gonna happen. Like, it is one reality affect the other reality. Life is Strange Double Exposure is a thrilling narrative adventure game <laughs> where you investigate adventure. a supernatural right. murder mystery. You play as Max Caulfield, a photographer and artist in residence at Caledon University, All right. a prestigious college in upstate Vermont. Vermont. When Max's new best friend, Safi, is found murdered okay. in mysterious cool. circumstances, Max discovers she has the supernatural ability to shift back and forth between two timelines. Ooh. In one timeline, Safi is dead, but in the other, she's Safi's still alive. alive and still in danger. Oh, oh shit. Max realizes the killer will soon strike again in both versions of reality. All right. Max and the player will use her new shift power to explore two versions of this vivid winter campus. As you forge allies okay. and pursue suspects across two versions of reality, you'll shape both timelines through your unforgettable choices. But it's a race against time. A relentless detective has Max in his sights, Ooh. and Safi's the killer grows closer see, with every like, clue uh, That line right there makes you think, oh, with the Max's detective did it. To shift and I think, that's the, I think that's the thought I'm going to go into. Can you solve and prevent um, the same murder why? when starting the game? Right? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Oh, that's like an addition to the trailer. Interesting. Murder mysteries, a narrative genre full of thrilling stories and intense action, scattered with red herrings and the inevitable climactic twist. But what happens when elements of the supernatural become involved, making the mystery at hand seemingly impossible to solve? And how do you write something so complex? I'm chatting with game director Jonathan Stouter and narrative director Felice Kwan to learn how they crafted Life is Strange Double Exposure's Supernatural Murder Mystery. All right, all right. That's something I am Jonathan actually very interested Felice, in hearing about. it is about. so wonderful to be here with you. How does it feel now that you can finally talk about Life is Strange Double Exposure? It has definitely been exciting to finally get to talk about uh, <laughs> what Tech Nine's been working on these past few years and, and get to talk more about the game today. We are excited for fan theories about what's going on in the trailer. <laughs> oh, we're going to have a lot of theories. We're going to have a lot of theories, trust me, because a mystery is afoot, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the core premise of the game. Right. But not just a murder mystery, it's a supernatural murder mystery. Um, what initially starts as a whodunit 
for doing the crime very quickly becomes a how could this have even happened? How is this even possible for right. a crime? All right. And then you, as the player, as Max, are uniquely suited uh, uh, to use your time powers to solve this crime. Oh, can you tell me about Max, who she is, and why she has time powers? Right. So Max Caulfield, famous photographer, artist in residence at Caledon University, mm -hmm. which is the setting of our game. She's come to Caledon University to to start afresh, to build a life that's separate from a past that she doesn't really want to think about anymore. Ooh. But unfortunately for her, uh, this mystery lands in her lap. So Felice, can you set the scene for us? Because we've got mysterious pasts at play, but then also this is a very unusual murder mystery. I right? wonder if they're going right. to talk about the so first game. So it is almost holly break, dead winter. Um, Max walks up a hill and finds her friend Sophie dead in the snow <gasps> seconds after seeing Sophie talking on the phone. What? There are no footprints. There's no weapon. Police are completely stumped as to how it could have happened. So there's not really any evidence or leads to go by. How do you solve a murder mystery like this? What tools might you have? Luckily, Max unlocks a supernatural ability. She is able to shift from the current timeline into a parallel timeline where her friend Sophie is alive. And fans of the first game will recognize this as kind of an evolution of her rewind power. And why exactly that has happened? I guess. Is at the heart of the story. What the hell was that? So my understanding I mean, is there are two timelines at play here. I guess. One in which that's Sophie a little is bit of an evolution. I don't. And the other, she's been murdered. Seems like a little different of a power too. Why don't too, I just stay in the timeline where she's still alive? That's very interesting. Because Max will very quickly discover the killer is still at large in the timeline where Safi is alive. And so, using her new supernatural abilities, yep. Max will have to both solve and prevent the same crime across two timelines. So we're dealing with two timelines and a race against time to stop a killer before they kill again. Two timelines and this a race like against time. It was very complicated to write. <laughs> it, it was uh, really complicated. It was also very interesting because Max meets essentially two versions of every person that she's investigated. True, true. Two versions of the environment. And these will both differ in ways that are significant because of Safi's death. It is also oh, kind of bitter. That's something I didn't even think about. Even the people that Max is growing closer to, like Moses, there's two versions of him as well, and she needs to navigate that. Can you tell us a bit more about Moses? Yeah. <gasps> so Moses is Safi's best friend, and he's a he's an astrophysicist at this college. Astrophysicist. Um, and because cool. of his uh, science background, he might be the only person who can help Max understand what's going on with her powers. And the two of them grow closer through this investigation. But Max has to wrestle with if she's ready to open up and tell someone about her powers for the first time mm. in years. Now, Jonathan, I can imagine that the multiple timelines also really lends itself to some interesting gameplay. Mm -hmm. What can we expect? Well, so Max's ability to shift between the two timelines open up a whole slew of new gameplay possibilities for us. I would so imagine. Max will be navigating between That's different pretty versions cool. That's of pretty the same exciting. space impacted by Safi's death, and she'll be able to use these powers to circumnavigate Under puzzles, safe. discover clues about suspects she might not otherwise have access to, in addition to navigating these different relationships in each mm. space. Oh, so like maybe in one timeline, a door is closed, in another, it's been unlocked, but it sort of depends on how you play the game, right? Right. Or Max can make sure that it is unlocked. Oh, now I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna write this down <laughs> in advance. And you mentioned earlier that this is described as a quote unquote, impossible murder that only Max can solve. Why is that? Because Max can talk to the murder victim. She's the only person who can do that and it's her relationship with Safi oh. that's the key to solving it. Safi's alive. Max, are you okay? It kind of seems like you're on drugs. Huh? Oh. No, I'm just really happy you're here with me. And your mom. So, drugs then. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's talk about Max's incredible new ability to bend time. Give us the lowdown on that. Right, so uh, Max has the ability to tear the fabric between these two timelines and instantaneously travel between them. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it shift. That's a lot of responsibility, and that's a lot of power. <laughs> Where does it come from? Because we know Max to have had powers in the past, right? Yeah, she actually does not have her rewind powers anymore. She has not used it because of the trauma associated with it mm -hmm. and fear of what might happen. And so when Safi is murdered, she, she can't rewind. It's like losing fluency in, in a language. But 
she does care enough about Safi that she's willing to use the new version of her power, the shifting, to try to help her friend. But why that has happened is, Max doesn't know, it's kind of at the heart of the story. So is Max kind of thrown by having this new power, or is she sort of old hat at this? She's like, yeah, I just got another power, pile it on. She uh, definitely, at first, she needs to use the power to investigate how the power works before <laughs> she can even start to investigate the murder. Um, so right off the bat, she is concerned, is this some version of Rewind? Have I gone back in time? She doesn't know. And so she starts traversing oh, the timelines, pulsing and true. listening in on folks across the veil and deducing how her power works. Okay, so this pulse power, is that the thing that she does where it's kind of like an aura coming out of her fingertips right. and she can, yeah, yeah. What's, oh, what's that? Right, pulse, so pulse Max can extend her supernatural senses to- That's kind of what we saw in True Colors. Is weakest between the two timelines. The where we saw where like- shift. Like and different versions that, of the characters also that like a show their emotion, of other but people, key objects, it's like a, the evolved the form of it. Shift, which comes in really form handy when you're it. a detective like and you want to eavesdrop yeah, pretty cool. and snoop and track suspects. So when she uses the pulse, she kind of like takes this glimpse into the two timelines, can make an assessment, and then choose which one to shift into. How does the Ooh. shift work? Right. So when Max has identified Intriguing. one of these weak points between uh, the timelines, we call them shift spots she can use the shifting ability to instantaneously travel to the other timeline. So in a flash, okay. she is instantaneously transported to the opposite version of the environment, different non-playable characters around. And so she's able to use that to traverse uh, puzzles, uh, sort of navigate locked doors, uh, suspects that won't talk to her in one timeline, but will in another. Oh, so like, is it apparent to the player yeah, I'm in this timeline where Safi's still alive, or I'm in this one where Safi's dead. Like, how will I know? I will like confuse myself right. <laughs> playing this. Uh, so does Max get confused? She does. Oh. Uh, uh, she absolutely does get confused. Um, and along the way, she has to learn uh, what's different between the mm. two timelines. Along with that's like, what we'll have to do with Claire. Um, yeah, but like Safi's death not just reverberates through the relationships on campus, um, but also through the environment, uh, and we reflect mm. this in different ways: different set dressing, different audio, different lighting. The weather patterns change. The butterfly. Effect. The weather so pattern. Oh, Safi's death the has butterfly this effect. <laughs> impact that creates two distinctly different timelines. I guess. I, I mean, I could definitely see that happening really again, where the, the decisions do affect a lot of what's going to go on. At the same time, she's juggling twice as many social interactions uh, and twice as many clues. So. She absolutely messes up. It's a lot of fun uh, for Max to try to keep all that straight. Right. So you'll True. have to keep an eye out for dialogue that's, choices because if you're not that's paying imaginable. attention, you might stumble into Max being confused about mm -hmm. the timeline. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're on your game, you can avoid those little faux pas in a conversation. I'm sorry. Oh. I was being nosy. I don't know why. Probably just paranoid. You think? Jesus, Max. Get your shit together. And also we're on a college <laughs> campus. So she's supposed to be using this power to be solving a murder mystery. But I imagine there's probably also a lot of drama that filters through. And, and she's an artist in residence. So she's supposed to be this mentor figure to, to the students who are still there on holiday break. Um, but yep. at the same yep. time, it would be really useful to manipulate these students to solve this mystery. So she, she yep. is juggling a lot. So Max Caulfield, who has been so closed off for so long, now has to be like, okay, I have to juggle all these new social situations and put myself out there. It sounds like this is going to be a big learning experience for Max. Now I have more impossible questions Finals than postponed. I had to begin with. I have to ask because I'm just so curious, which came first, the idea for Max to have this timeline shifting power? Or did your team just want to experiment with the idea of multiple timelines? We have been interested in multiple timelines for a while mm. because of that gameplay possibilities. Um, but I think it wasn't until we were exploring Max's story that it, it really clicked how we could do how we could do it in a way that felt absolutely intertwined with the emotional journey as well. And shifting and traversing the timelines is in the player's hands. You have to trust the player gonna do it. Yeah, the player over the course of the game is going to learn how to use this ability to mm -hmm. navigate the environments, the relationships, and then at a certain point, we just trust the player to Ooh. navigate and solve this mystery. When That's I gonna woke be up, interesting. Safi was gone forever. And now, I am in a whole new world of questions. What are the 
these worlds, timelines, I wonder if there'll actually realities? be more realities. Where did this new power And they're just not talking from? about. I mean, obviously, double exposure is two realities, but. Forever. Lucky for me. I think that's One something they could probably do like very late in the game. How do I protect the Safi I have left? Now, as a big fan, I am so happy that Hannah Tell is returning mm. as Max. Yep, yep. But for people who are new, players who are new to the Life is Strange franchise, do they have to go back and play all of the older titles? What's the point of entry for them? You don't, you don't have to at all. All of the Life is Strange games stand on their own um, and have their own story. And so for Life is Strange Double Exposure, players will have everything they need to understand the emotional context of mm -hmm. Max's past. I see. But it is a brand new location in a small college. There's new characters. Uh, you can absolutely start with this first game. Seems Very like cool. Safi rubbed a few people the wrong way. How should I know? Go talk to somebody who's been here longer than six months. We do all know that Life is Strange is all about choices <laughs> and the consequences of those choices for better or worse. So for returning players like me, who made really hard decisions that we now have to live with, do we bring those with us to Life is Strange Double Exposure? Uh, yes, so the returning players from Max's first adventure will remember that there's a massive decision to make. Oh, are they that actually going to make us Very choose? different endings. Um, Which one really we chose? At Deck Nine, if we were going to make another Max adventure, that the game would have to respect both those endings. Life oh. is Strange Double Exposure does that very thing. There's no canon ending in our book to the first game. Double Exposure will uh, respect both endings in Max's thoughts, her journal, her SMS, her interactions with other characters, what she opts to reveal about her past to her new friends. Uh, it's all uh, reflective of that final choice. For all of us players who I, I have to assume that guilt making those tough decisions, that, that final decision kind of is going to be something like that we that choose again. at the end, Will we have or at the beginning, of those and that influences choices that it, keep us up at night playing life is strange I'm double exposure. Yeah, and Max that. will face a lot of tough decisions. It's it's kind of her thing. <laughs> perfect, perfect. That's what I want. Bring it on, bring it on. And so it's been so long since the original game came out. For players who maybe don't have the original console that they played on, or let alone the save file from their Life is Strange 1 game, how will they import their previous choices? So Safi and Max will have a conversation that's pretty early on in the game, and Arcadia Bay just comes up naturally in that conversation, so players can remake the choice then. Oh. Uh, or they can try Okay, they're the answer. Okay, so it sounds like Safi is kind of like... A little interrogation there with Max. Safi's very and, curious okay. about Max because Max is generally pretty closed off and Safi knows there's something interesting there. Okay. okay, okay. So that, that's very where we're going to see this backstory come into play. Very interesting. Very, very cool. So it sounds like new players are all good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 100%. That does make me wonder if Chloe would show up if you chose one of the, one of the different, like the Max ending Hoffa where a character that you didn't save Arcadia Bay. You saved right Chloe. There in Life is Strange Double Exposure. And then for returning players, very interesting. Um, we absolutely honor the, the, the biggest, most impactful decision you're going to remember from that first game and carry that forward so you can see how that plays out. All right. All right. Adventure. Is this about the blue-haired girl whose picture you keep in your wallet? Wait, you snooped in my wallet? Stop deflecting. <laughs> the girl with the blue hair. What's the deal with you two? Oh, I mean, I guess that's one Next up, of the, we speak to Hannah the Tell, way to answer the iconic that, voice um, of Max Caulfield. Like, choose what you're and be sure to stick around, because in less than 10 minutes, we'll showcase an extended look at new Life is Strange double exposure gameplay for right, the very right. first time. It'll you be our don't first want to miss it. Extended look at it. Very interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there'd be like a commercial. Okay. I'm Hannah Tell, and I play Max Caulfield in Life is Strange Double Exposure. Hannah, I'm so thrilled that you are back as Max Caulfield in Life is Strange Double Exposure. This is what we've been waiting for. How does it Thank feel you. for you to return to Max? Probably a lot of emotions underplay. Yeah, so many emotions. It, it, it's an incredible feeling. And in, in a certain way, it feels like I'm coming home. It, I, I love Max so much, and we have so much in common. and. Uh, my experience playing her the first time around was so formative in my life. It's a real honor to get to come back and uh, 
expand on her story. I think it's How very did cool that she came back. This time around to versus expand for the people that do this. 2015. I'm glad. Well, she's uh, grown up so much. She was in high school in the first game, and now true, she's, true. you know, out of her college years. She has a somewhat prestigious position as an artist in residence at this amazing university, and she has this whole amazing future ahead of her in terms of her artist career as a photographer and I think that that's really given her a sense of purpose that's motivated her to kind of shed some of the shyness parts of her mm -hmm. introversion that held her back I think that she's kind of grown out of that she's more comfortable with who she is and she feels like hey this is who I'm supposed to be be safe that's yeah. very cool when am I not she's been <laughs> suppressing her powers yes while on the road and now she's this artist in residence at Caledon in Vermont. Does she still feel like she needs to suppress them? Or why did she feel like she needed to suppress them? Well, the powers resulted in ultimate devastation in her life and everyone's life around her. And even like the space time continuum with the weather related yep. phenomena yep. that were taking place because of her using this power. So she feels like this is like a, a deadly weapon. It's not something that she's going to ever want to use again. And also it really sets her apart from um, having a normal life and, and having normal relationships with people. Yeah. So that I think makes she's sense. put that away very confidently um, and is very hesitant about ever tapping back into that side of herself again. She doesn't know what could happen. It could even yeah. kill her yeah. to try to use her powers again. Whoa. I mean, what, who knows? Yeah. We've caught up with who Max Caulfield is now. What has she been doing in the time between the events of Arcadia Bay to now? Well, she's been on the road. Um, she doesn't feel comfortable in any one place. And she's living like a nomadic lifestyle, mm. taking photographs of abandoned, lonely spaces. For some reason, anything that's desolate or stark and intense really draws her eye. And she likes to photograph that. And she's made a bit of a name for herself by photographing right, these right. types of images. Interesting. And she searches for them and stays in hotels and hangs out in local watering holes and just kind of absorbs oh, the slice shift. of life of each little town that she's been in. And now she's in a new environment with all new people mm -hmm. and a new job responsibility. And, and new powers too, and right? new powers. Can you yeah. talk about that a little bit? Because fans of the original game we love the rewind power. You know, we were turning back time, but now time is moving in a different direction. Exactly. Right? Well, as Max has evolved, her powers have evolved. She didn't use that power for a really long time, understandably, because it created so much devastation. So it, it atrophied and it, it adapted into something Ooh. different. What if I told you there's this other timeline where Safi is alive and I can travel between this timeline and that one. So she has a supernatural ability to move between the timelines, yeah. see the timeline where Safi is still alive, yes. go into the one where she's dead, talk to people. Yes, exactly. She has a unique position to figure out what's really going on in this terrible situation of Safi's death. So I know you're a true crime fan. So when yeah. you got the call of, hey, we want you to come back and play Max <laughs> and solve this mystery, where were you? What was going through your head when, when you <laughs> finally learned the news? Well, I was still in school. I was studying neuroscience. I was trying to prepare to oh. calculus. I had to have two different tutors. It was a horrible situation. <laughs> two timelines, two tutors. <laughs> two timelines, two tutors, <laughs> one mystery, <laughs> one failing grade. Um, <clears throat> no, uh, but I got the call and it was just like such an amazing rescue from my math phobia. <laughs> and the producer and the performance director telling me and I just have sobbed into the phone. Well, what this actually will have bad. consequences. As you can probably tell, the fan base, myself included, have a very personal relationship with Max. How does it feel for you personally knowing the impact that you've made on fans in the community? It's just unbelievable to be playing a part that that resonated with with someone, so many people. Um, yep. It makes me feel so validated and so honored and so grateful. Um, there are so many fans of this game 
that have created this really loving community where they share their art and they pour their time and energy into creating gorgeous artwork or mm -hmm. really intricate creative cosplays. I've actually tattoos, started following a lot of different people and that have been doing a lot of the art recently. Because the game changed them and the game changed me too. So I feel very connected to them and uh, it, it moves me to tears all the time. Let's thrash, Shakamara. <gasps> thrash. Okay. Let's pretend you said something normal, <laughs> but basically that. <laughs> and it's not often that an actor gets to reprise a character. Was that something that you, from a physical perspective, from a performance perspective, had to take into account? Because, you know, back in 2015, you were portraying a teenage Max mm -hmm. versus Life is Strange Double Exposure was an adult Max. Did you have to change your voice or pitch? Yes, well, my voice kind of stayed the same, um, but Max's voice matured and got a bit more deeper and more grounded in its, uh, in its tone and um, her posture uh, became a bit more sure of herself and tall mm, and that makes standing sense. to that her makes full sense. height and taking up space and being comfortable with that. And so I had to, you know, adjust everything about my body to try to uh, convey her growth. Hmm. Intriguing. <laughs> and now we're proud to present an extended look Ooh. at the gameplay from Life is Strange Double Exposure. Here it is. I mean, I don't think it'll look a lot more different than what we've been seeing from like the most recent Life in True Colors, but ooh, a pre-beta development build. Give me the Cliff Notes version of what we're actually here to see. A bunch of little pieces of the shattered asteroid. From ooh. 11 million miles away. This is what I get for introducing you to. <laughs> wow. <gasps> that is really cool. So should we be worried about this crazy asteroid hitting Earth? <laughs> Not in our lifetime. And it'll probably disintegrate before it reaches the surface. All right, Max. If you have 24 hours before the world ends, what would you do? Oh, I'm... Documenting that oh. Shit. Can you imagine how cool an apocalypse? I mean, that's that the be? only proper oh answer there. Oh my god! This again? Have. Nobody would see it. I'm telling you, art requires an audience. Otherwise, it's just okay. Chief, agree to disagree. Awful quiet over there, Murph. Don't want to weigh in. Oh, uh, I wasn't listening. But hey, looks like the equipment's working. Mm. Why am I not at home wrapped up in a blanket burrito right now? I don't know. Me and Moses out in town without you? I think there's whole wild times you would have missed. <laughs> Lakeport's most notorious party animals. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I brought Cup. Figured that was better than passing the bomb around. She brought a bear cup. This uh, is the best you could do? That seems like a I don't space type of cup. Building. Don't blame me for the astronomy department's bad taste. Mine says I'm the world's horniest grandma. <laughs> Grab a mug, Max. Oh, and then you get to choose which mug you want. That's pretty cool. Well, this action of consequences. I have some good news. Uh, it's big, but I can't tell you what it is. What? You can't tell us you have good news, and then I don't want to say anything else until everything what? is finalized. Mysterious. Well, whatever we're celebrating, I think it calls for a selfie. Oh, let me. I just got this camera, and I want to get some good use out of it. What should we say? Damn. I think I have hypothermia. What? Moses, Moses has hypothermia. hypothermia. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I've got income. I'm going to... You know, um, 
do my thing. <laughs> oh, this might be. They might be showing off where. Good news. Safi huh? gets murdered. Secrets. How you ever hold a conversation with each other is beyond me. Oh, I'm never dying mind. Okay. to know what Safi's good news is. Maybe I can somehow convince her to spill. <laughs> Messages. I love how Moses always looks so passionate Ooh, about his work. Ooh, you can take just Even random he's pictures. Just crunching numbers. How good pose. Hey, choices. Moses. Casually lean on the telescope. Ooh. I might knock it over. Pretend. That's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing. Pretty cool mechanic in the game. Cool. Hopefully, in the like, you're able to actually use the telescope and see the asteroids when it happens. I think we're pretty. Hey, cool. Safi. Mhm. Mm Find anything poemable? <laughs> the moon. Kind of. The moon. Though I'd hardly be the first. Carl Sandberg called it a friend for the lonesome to talk to. Ooh. Pretty. I haven't seen a moon this bright outside of Oregon. Oh, a Max biography nugget. Uh, <laughs> those are rare. You never really talk about why you came here. You already know. Your mom threw me a lifeline. Pulled me out of freelance hell. True. One of these I days, think... I'm going to find out what you're running from, Max Caulfield. Oh. That's a promise. You okay, Spill. What's the news? No chance. <gasps> that vault is closed. You're killing oh. me here. Are you really going to keep secrets from your dear friend, Max? You're one to talk, my dear. <laughs> okay, I'll leave you to your muse. Hmm. I get, I mean, obviously, it wouldn't expose the secret here either. In this extended gameplay, so... Music's pretty good too. Hey, Moses. Doesn't some small part of you want to know what Safi's good news is? All right. I think I have an idea. What? But once we go down this road, we can't turn back. Um, okay. Give this to Safi if you can. You'll probably have to trick her into taking it or plant it on her. Like a prank? If no, you can. This has rules. So it's more of a game. Whoever holds the bottle cap has to do whatever you say. Well, within reason. Moses, I have literally never wanted to play a game more in my entire life. You say that now. But Safi has a very loose definition of within reason. <laughs> and she'll come for you next. Okay, wish me luck. Oh. Interesting, interesting. Okay, how am I going to plant this on Safi? Since Safi hasn't quit smoking yet, oh. maybe I can use it to my advantage. You're gonna just I'm put not it about in there. relaxing my principle to give Safi that bottle cap. There might be some other hiding places up here that could work. Snowbank? I don't know about the Could I bank. hide the bottle cap in a snowball? Not oh. sure I want to rely on my aim. I'd only Ooh. get one shot. It's interesting. Safi eats these when she can't slip away for a smoke. It'd be totally normal for me to offer her one. Oh. Now I've just got to deliver this to Safi. 
That's interesting. Hey, Safi. Mm-hmm. Want some candy? Want a piece of candy? There's a few left. No. Twist my arm. <laughs> <sighs> Shit. It's a conspiracy. <laughs> Come on, Max. Surely you, of all people, would let a girl have her secrets. And violate the sacred covenant of the bottle cap? Never. You know I'm going to get you back for this, right? Less thready, more talk. Okay. <laughs> so, well, I've been shopping around a bunch of my poetry, right? Like, as a collection. And... Someone bought it. A publisher made an offer. For real? Oh my god, Sophie! <laughs> That's incredible! Congratulations! <laughs> It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Nothing signed or anything yet, so I want to keep it under wraps until all the paperwork gets signed. Understood. Your secret is safe with me. <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. Hello? This is Safi. <gasps> yes, this is Safiya Llewellyn Fayad speaking. Be right back. I think Sophie got the deal. Or Sophie got the deal. So, uh, would you really take pictures of the end of the world? Yeah. Think about it. I take photos <laughs> of empty buildings. An empty planet? That's next level. That is okay. next level. But it's like Safi said. Nobody is ever going to see them. Sure, but... Who cares? I take a lot of photos nobody ever sees. I want to go out doing something I'm good at. You know? Mm. Huh. That's very inspiring. Oh, what? No, nothing. Just... Didn't take you as a, it's the journey, not the destination type. I mean, I guess I'm not. It's more like sometimes you reach the destination alone. Oh. That's okay. Look at that. What a tail. Intriguing. Moses was right. This is awesome. What the? <laughs> oh. So that, that's her rewind powers, probably. Trying to come into, back into player. Her new uh, shifting powers. Are you okay? Interesting. Y yeah. All good. Just dizzy. Maybe the champagne. I think I'm gonna take off, get some rest. I can give you a ride if you wait a few minutes. No, that's okay. I think a walk will clear my head. I think so. Hmm. 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 Interesting. That might be it. No. That'd be like the perfect place to end the gameplay, but. Very, but uh, I think they're gonna probably try to go to the point where you um, find Safi murdered. I'm thinking. <gasps> Ooh, some nice music. I'm glad Moses invited me out tonight. Exactly how you came to my life at all. It seems you always. Caledon's a beautiful campus, but it's even better when it snows. Just mm. to suddenly pick. Call me crazy, but I know that's everything I know. 
What a perfect day for walking home. I'll just catch up with Safi tomorrow. Oh. This is what she wants. Yeah, I think that's what we're about to see. Safi's chain smoking again? I wonder what that call was about. Oh no. What happened to the snowman's head? Wow, Safi. What did Mr. Snowman ever do to you? What? Hello, owl. Now I know who's been weaving all that squirrel gore around campus. Picture, 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 picture. How far go? Excited to find you. Don't get to take a shot like this every day. Wow. You're really watching me, aren't you? Oh man. Okay. The camera's probably broken now. What? This is not a test. What? Max! The emergency broadcast system is now in effect. I caused this! I caused all of oh. this! Taking those type of pictures reminds her of what happened to Arcadia Bay, or well, like the last couple of minutes of Life is Strange. Max? Hey, 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 are you okay? Something's wrong. Sophie. Hey, come back. Sophie, she seems okay. Oh no. I feel like I should check on her anyway. Better safe than sorry. Oh no, oh no. Shit! Sophie, hang on. That's Sophie right oh, there. Sophie's fine. For a moment, I thought. Unless that's Sophie's ghost. Or unless like the realities like are combined right here. Sophie. Sophie. Hey. You okay? Oh, oh. What in the world? What in the world? the opening you know one of the opening cutscenes of the game that's pretty good that's a pretty good opening cutscene pretty good extended gameplay look and the asteroids is what's making reality shit. that's pretty good Thanks for tuning in to our Life is Strange Double Exposure Reveal Show. 
You can pre-order the game now yep. for release on October 29th, 2024. Yeah, that's literally just a few months away. I have literally never wanted to play a game more <laughs> in my entire life. Pre-order the Ultimate Edition you to get, get advanced access early. to the first two chapters on October 15th, two whole weeks before release date. Exclusive cat content. You'll also receive five outfit packs. Spooky, Decades, Final Fantasy VII, Fan Favorite, and Paw Prince. Final as Fantasy well VII. as exclusive cat content. That's pretty cool. Follow us on all social media at Life is Strange Game for the latest updates, and we'll see you again soon. All right, all right. I think that is probably it. I just want to make sure. Well, okay. Well, I think that's it. Um, I could probably just, yeah, okay. So that is was a very good stream, in my opinion. Um, well, like, uh, reveal of the game. They showed off a lot. They had, a, the interviews are pretty insightful. Um, you know, related to, yeah, and I just want to, there was a five minute count, I want to make sure, but um, their interviews were pretty insightful, you know, we, we found out a lot about the games, uh, about the game through, you know, how they're going to handle the decision you make at the end of the first Life is Strange, um, kind of why Max has this power and not the rewind power, um, it's very cool that they're bringing back the original voice actress, of Max, you know, that extended gameplay look looked really cool. Um, you know, that actually had a lot of the original Life is Strange vibes, which is very exciting. You know, I th I'm assuming that was like the opening or one of the opening cutscenes um, to the original game. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have for you all today. Um, I will obviously, um, more than very much likely will be playing the game around the time it releases so i'm very excited about that i don't know if i'll do a let's play i'm thinking about doing a let's play of the original life is strange um but i think it'd be a little more difficult um to do a double exposure live stream but i will make you know i'll think about be i'll think about that um leading up to the release of the game but yeah that is all i have for you all today so i hope that you all are doing well and staying safe and make sure you do make you happy because I rhymes with generic happy. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.